The following program is made possible by the partners and friends of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. You were created to be more than you are now, to love more than you love now, and to live a life that's fully alive. Take a few minutes and join Pastor Ronnie Phillips for a message of grace that will help you live fully alive. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Pastor Ronnie Phillips, and I'm the founder of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International, and today you are watching Fully Alive. We've been in a series on the cross of Calvary, and today I want to talk to you about spiritual warfare. When you made Jesus the Lord of your life, you signed up for a battle, whether you realize it or not. We are in a war here on this earth, but we have already won. Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, we have gained the victory. We have the victory. We just have to occasionally remind Satan that he's a loser, he's a liar, he's a murderer and a thief, and we just have to plead the blood of Jesus and he goes shrieking back with his demons. So I don't want you to be scared of the enemy, but I want you to know how to put your armor on according to Ephesians and take the fight to the enemy. Today we're gonna to teach you how. When you accept Christ, it's first and foremost a spiritual death. You can't be born again until you die. The word trespass means to cross the line. The word sin means to miss the mark. When you sin, you miss the mark for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's me, that's you. Some of us don't admit it, but we all sin. Sin means to miss the mark. Trespass means to cross the line. Transgress means to hurt the heart of God. Iniquity means now you've not only missed the mark, you've not only crossed the line, you've not only broken God's heart, you're now eat up with demons and you're involved in iniquity. So Paul would say, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. What this means is you haven't applied the blood of the lamb to your flesh. You're living under a cloud of guilt, a cloud of regret, and you haven't applied the blood of the lamb to your mess, to your struggles. I don't know about you, but I, I sometimes just want to grab people that are in bondage. It's not that I'm any better than them. I don't feel like I'm better than them, but I, I want to say the way you're looking at this is wrong. Change your mind, change your thinking, change your direction. Your way is not working. Try the cross. He has made alive together with him. Having forgiven you all the trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. The law can't save you. Rules and regulations can't save you. If you try to live a rule-based life and you never get to relationship, koinonia, with God, then you will miss the mark every single time and you'll be so frustrated with the experience of it all, you'll want to give up. The requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Now here we go. Having disarmed the principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by way of the cross. All through the ages, Satan has tried to kill God's children. He has tried to attack the seed. He stands in opposition, this enemy, to everything that is Christ. 
In Ezekiel 28, it talks about the fall from heaven. We believe in a gap theory. We believe there was a civilization, but civilization before Adam and Eve. I won't get into all that today. But the enemy was already in the garden. And evil has always existed. And Satan fell from heaven, Lucifer, because he wanted that which wasn't his. All the anointing he had, all the glory he had wasn't enough. He wanted God's. And we see that in the kingdom today when it is no longer about serving him. It's about serving ourselves. It's no longer about his will, but my will. Pride exists from continent to continent, and it is the way of the enemy. Genesis 3 says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. A war was declared against Satan. Satan hates Israel. He hates the seed. He hates the unborn. He hates righteousness. He hates the local church. And he hates you. Yeah, yeah he hates you. Pharaoh of Egypt tried to exterminate the seed. Assyria and Babylon tried to destroy the seed. Herod tried to stamp out all of the children of Bethlehem. I've preached many times before the dove. The devil will come and after the dove, the devil will come. There will always be a Herod, a Haman, and a hijacker to steal what God is doing or has done in your life. But when the enemy whispers that accusation, you take him to the cross and you remind him of his defeat. What does Satan hate? You, Christ, the kingdom of Christ, heirs to the throne, the ministry of Christ. Jesus would open the scroll and he would read from Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. These are things the devil hates. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. The enemy wants you to stay defeated, stay depressed, stay broken, stay addicted. He wants you taking a pill to get you up, taking a pill to get you to sleep, taking a pill to make you feel good. There's nothing wrong with medicine as long as you've got control of it. Many of us, it's got control of us. To proclaim liberty, freedom to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who were oppressed, to proclaim the now moment, the Kairos acceptable year of the Lord. In other words, the enemy wants to keep you looking backwards. Now is the time. God is always in the now and in the future. I believe in honoring the past, but we shouldn't live there. God always has a new sound, amen? God always has a new ministry, a new destiny, generational legacy. Religious people are the worst about wanting to stay back in what used to be. Isn't that pitiful? People get, religious people get on my nerves. Y'all know that. I mean, rather stay in the comfort of what feels good or sounds good to you then let a new generation get a hold of God and start advancing God's kingdom. I love what my friend Jensen Franklin told us in the vehicle. Brent, remember he said he told his church, if you're over 40 and saved, it's no longer about you anymore. Now that was my first year. He told me not to say that till about year four, so I can say it now. <laughs> but at some point it can't be about you anymore. Problem is, many of us have mouthed a prayer, but God's never healed our heart. We still struggle with identity. We still need attention. We're still broken from what dad did or mom did. We, we, we still don't know how to interact with people. We're anxious. Let me tell you this. When Jesus died, he paid the price for all of that, 
It only still exists in us because we allow it to still exist in us. It's got to be removed. The enemy has to be rebuked. We must be restored. We are a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. The word creation means progressive change. Not as bad as I used to be, but I'm not as good as I'm going to be. Glory to God. I want you to be free. I want you to be free. This is what it says in 1 John 3. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus didn't just die so that we could mouth the sinner's prayer. He came to fulfill every Hebrew prophecy, even that from Genesis 3, to crush Satan. And if we embrace what Jesus did, Satan lives under our feet. The late Adrian Rogers, one of my dad's mentors, I believe said this first, we're not fighting for a victory, we're fighting from a victory. We're not trying to win. We already won. We already won. We just need to declare that and worship Jesus and have an intimate relationship with him so that when the enemy comes to whisper, we're so in love with Jesus We're walking with Jesus to the degree that we recognize the enemy before he even gets the accusation into our mind. We realize it's an attack. I want to remind you this morning about our victory. Number one, the cross disarmed Satan. The cross disarmed Satan. King James Version uses the word spoil, and I like this. It means when Jesus died, he took away the spoils of Satan, disarmed Satan. So the weapons he uses, the weapon of accusation, the weapon of our own words, the weapon of unfair circumstances, the weapons of this world, They've been taken from the enemy. Yes. He's been disarmed. If you know Christ, he can't possess you. I don't care what you've heard. He can't possess you. Now you will be tempted. And we are on a fallen earth. And if you don't apply the blood to your flesh and to humanity, then you will fight your entire life. But if you apply the blood of the Lamb to your mess, you can have victory. You can have joy unspeakable and full of glory. You can have a peace that passes all understanding. I'm not talking about religion, friend. I'm talking about complete restoration and fulfillment. How many of you want to enjoy the Christian life? Did you know it was supposed to be fun? Some of you need to alert your face if you did. This is supposed to be fun. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. I remember one time my son, he's off at college. He told me I was going through a tough time here at church. You know, there's never such thing as a tough time in church, is there? I'd been involved for many years, but it was my first or second year as lead pastor. and There was drama going on. I was fighting hell before service and after service and everything else. My son, he, 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 you know, he's kind of straight to the point. He's not very compassionate. He said, Dad, you ever thought about doing something else? <laughs> I said, yeah, all the time, but I'm afraid God will kill me if I do. <laughs> it's supposed to be fun. We need to alert our face that this is a joy-filled life, a guilt-free life. God wants to bless you. The cross disarmed Satan of his rank his weapons, his warfare. He can't win because he already lost. Satan lost his right to imprison you, to defeat you, to depress you. Satan forfeited the power of death. The Bible says that death is the final sting, the final blow from the enemy. 
But it's a losing attempt. Because if we know Christ, we spend an eternity with him. But as far as humanity goes, death is not our friend. If you've done as many funerals as I have this year, you'd hate it even more. But we have hope. Paul, in this same letter, talks about Christ in us, the hope of glory. So, yeah, I've lost best friends this year. I've lost family. But I got a hope. Because of Jesus, I get to spend eternity with them. And so, yes, death is the final sting. But it's still a losing attempt to undo what Christ has already done. Satan can hate you, he can threaten you, he can tempt you, but he can only gain access to you if you allow him to. He's disarmed. Number two, as we examine the cross, the cross not only disarms Satan of his rank and his royalty and his authority, The cross denied Satan. It denied him. Whenever the enemy comes to accuse you, you need to say this, access denied. Say it with me, access denied. Whenever those memories of what happened to you and those who left you and those who cursed you, they start to come back, just say access denied. I'm a son of the most high God. I'm a daughter of the king. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm a victor, not a victim. I'm beautiful in the eyes of my father. I have purpose. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Devil, you a liar. You're a murderer. You're a thief. You have no legal authority over my life. You've been disarmed. So now I'm denying you access by the blood of the Lamb. I reject your way of thinking. I see your strategy. And it has been defeated by the blood of the Lamb. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. I've told y'all many times, you know, I coached Little League ball a long time. And I like to rub things in when I win. Now, I don't talk till the last game's over, and I'm, I'm sure I've won. But I believe in dancing, backflip, spiking the ball, Heisman pose, love it all. Dizzy Dean said, it ain't bragging if you can do it. Amen? But I love this verse because when, when I think of the seven sayings from the cross and Jesus saying, to tell us, it is finished, and then into your hands I commend my spirit, Father. When I think of the sayings of the cross, I think of my Savior going down, as it says in the Apostles' Creed, grabbing the keys of death from the enemy and just doing a dance, man, on every demon that's ever tried to attack humanity. He made a public spectacle over them. There was a party going on in heaven. Oh, I think of that parable Jesus told of the prodigal son. My son was dead, but now he's alive. (laughs) Don't get me going down that way today because in all the parables of Jesus, there's a picture of his return. Oh, my goodness. My son was dead, but now he's alive. Oh, that party for the prodigal was nothing like the party for the Savior of the world, God's only son. Access denied. Another name for Satan is Apollyon, and Revelation means destroyer. The enemy wants to destroy you. Came to Calvary to destroy Christ. He's the father of all terror. He's come to destroy you. But if you know Jesus, and you make declarations over your life, as it says in Jude, building yourself up in the most holiest of faith, he can't touch you. I close right here this morning. Yes, the cross disarmed Satan. Yes, it denied Satan. But I want to remind you that the cross defeated 
Satan. Somebody ought to give him some praise. The enemy has been defeated. Death can't hold you down because it didn't hold him down. And we're promised a great reunion. Paul would say, not legalism, but Christ in him. You were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Oh, I'm talking about a spiritual operation. An operation of transformation. <laughs> an operation of regeneration. Oh my goodness. When you confess Jesus is your Savior, God the Father put his surgical gloves on and started to do surgery on you. And whatever you're still holding on to, you're holding on to it because you've been unwilling to release it. But the surgeon's ready to cut that thing out for you to be free. Not legalism. You see, there's all kinds of isms. Paul was dealing with Gnosticism. This is that there are many ways to heaven, that Jesus wasn't a real person. <laughs> what about legalism? Some of you are in bondage, not because of your mental health, not because of your sins, but because of the spirit of religion. This is all just a list of rules for you, and you're miserable because of it. That's legalism. Knowing the rules, but beating yourself up every day over the rules and judging everybody else because of a set of standards that you yourself can't even uphold. Not legalism, but Christ. Not ritualism. Ritualism means we continue to do things out of a spirit of religion, not relationship with Christ. Why do we do this? Is it because it's the way we've always done it? Or is God's anointing on it? Not legalism, not Gnosticism, not ritualism, not mysticism, not, uh, let me tell you this. The blood still does something to me. What Jesus did for me still matters. I'm still humbled by it. I'm still in awe of it. And I believe with every fiber of my being, if you'll grab hold of it, it will change your life, your children's lives, your children's children's lives. This is not religion to me. It is the gospel. I'm tired of God's people living beat up, defeated, less than, in drama all the time when we've been given the victory. What is it that drives a person to become a suicide bomber? Say evil. It's evil. How can people abuse one another? Abuse children, it's evil. What started off as a circumstance, a word, missing of the mark, has led to iniquity. The enemy will take you down that road if you will let him. But you have to apply the blood. How do we answer the sin of racism and hatred? How do we explain that? It's evil. But what about you? What about me? What is it in your life that needs to go? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Not the person sitting on your row, to you. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you. What is it in you? Not your mate, not your coworkers, not your family members, not that one cousin that gets on everybody's nerves. You. What inside of you needs to go? Because we can't have revival if we don't get clean. The enemy has been defeated. I've done my best to describe the weapons of the enemy. What about the weapons of our warfare? The Bible says they're not carnal, but they're mighty 
pulling down strongholds. Ephesians 6 says we're to put on the whole armor of God. So instead of looking at humanity and science to solve every struggle you have, why don't you take that struggle to the cross, straighten up, get filled up, and put your armor on. So how do you get the enemy or these strongholds out of your life? Well, you've got to acknowledge the stronghold. Then you've got to tear that sucker out. And you do that by way of the Spirit. What do you do? You just confess your sins to the Lord. You forgive those people that have hurt you. You release your rights in that offense. And you allow the Spirit to cleanse you and fill you and bless you and fill you with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And when you do that, you will be walking in the newness of life. Listen, the devil has been defeated. All you have to do is put your armor on and take the fight to the enemy. Let me pray for you. Father God, we just come to you and we worship you right now, Jesus. We thank you for your love, your grace, and for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on that cross and get up out of that grave to ultimately and finally defeat Satan. Lord, we remind Satan right now that he is a liar, a murderer, and a thief, and he has no legal standing over the people watching this show, listening to this broadcast. Satan, you're a liar, you've been defeated, and we command you to leave the minds, the hearts, the will, and the emotions of God's children. Leave by the blood of Jesus. Now, Holy Spirit, begin to seal this up, begin to fill your people up, and give them joy unspeakable and full of glory. Listen, if you want to learn more about how to be free, go to my website, ronniephillips.org. Go to our YouTube channel. Just search Ronnie Phillips. Subscribe to that. Many messages about warfare that will help you walk in the newness of life with your armor on. Hey, thank you for your partnership, your prayers, your friendship. We want you to tune in to Fully Alive every week. If you miss an episode, you can go to iTunes. You can go to YouTube. You can go to social media. We want you to hear the gospel, and we want to help you do battle. I'll see you next time. When we were little, we dreamed about being a hero. But most of us don't see ourselves as heroic now. The mundane and everyday world has drained our enthusiasm and the dream to be something extraordinary. But if you know God, there is a superhero on the inside of you. Aren't you ready to activate your hero within and be all that you were created to be? It's time to wake that dream inside of you. It's time to reclaim the supernatural. It's time to let the hero shape you into the person you were created to be. Order The Hero Within by Pastor Ronnie Phillips at theherowithinbook.com. Don't miss a sermon or a show. Subscribe to Pastor Ronnie's YouTube channel and be sure to turn on notifications so you'll know when he uploads a new video. Follow him on Instagram too for more exclusive content. Pastor Ronnie Phillips delivers help and hope around the world through missions, media, and the message of grace. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today and join us again next week for another message that will help you live free and fully alive.